स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Good morning everyone so in today's lecture i am going to talk about the different special cases of euler lagrange equations so just a brief recap uh, in the last uh, lecture we have found the major result in this course namely the euler lagrange equations so let me just you know uh, briefly mention what is the result uh, we have found that the extremal to the functional satisfies this this uh, second order ode which is my euler lagrange equation so then i'm in today's lecture i'm going to look at some special cases so let me just uh, categorize the different special cases uh in which this euler lagrange equation uh, simplifies so my first case would be where where f depends where my integrand to the functional depends only on y prime right so in that case we will see how the euler lagrange simplifies in the second case we will look at uh the case when f depends uh well there is f has uh, has no explicit dependence has no explicit dependence on x okay so we will see that f is only a function of y and y prime right and in the third case we will look at the scenario where f has uh, no explicit dependence on y okay uh so so in this case for example i have the form that f is only a function of y prime in this case i have f is uh, only a function of y and y prime and finally in this case i have that f is only a function of uh, has no explicit y dependence so it only depends on x and y prime okay and then there is a special fourth case where f has a linear dependence on y prime or i call this as the degenerate case and why it is called the degenerate case we are going to later on look at this uh, uh, situation so in this case my f has a linear dependence on y prime okay so let me now look at each of these cases one by one so let let us look at the first case and how the euler lagrange simplifies in this first case so so as i said in the first case my my f is only a function of y prime so we see that my my euler lagrange equation so let me just rewrite the el equations so these are my el equations uh, we see that since f is not a function of y explicitly this in this case this particular partial derivative is zero and then it's uh, this equation shows that we can immediately integrate with respect to x to see that that the result that we get is del partial of f with respect to y prime is is a constant right let's call this as c so in this case the euler lagrange equation reduces to a first order ode or differential equation uh, so well we could go one step further we could say that look you know since uh, f depends only on y prime but y depends on x right so so we could use possibly use chain rule so which means that uh, well so this equation is equivalent to saying that uh, 
the x derivative of partial f partial y is 0. right? So, we could possibly use the chain rule to see that this is also equal to uh, the second partial derivative of f with respect to y prime square times times del y prime del x right and uh, and and that is it right. So, because f is only a function of y prime and this is set equal to 0. So, we see that we could have two choices. Uh, so, this means that we have f uh, second derivative with respect to y prime times we see that this is y double prime is equal to 0. So, either so the product of this imply equal to 0 implies either this quantity is 0 or this quantity is 0 right. So, if this quantity is 0 it implies it implies that f of y prime is a linear function it is a linear function of y prime right. So, that we can directly integrate uh, f of uh, y prime directly integrate with respect to y prime twice and we see that this is a linear function and this naturally reduces to case 4 which we will consider later. So, I am not going to consider the case where this is 0. So, which means we are only left with the fact we are only left with the fact that that y prime y double prime is 0 and in this case we get that y the extremal y satisfies an equation of a straight line right. So, c 1 x plus c 2. So, we see that in this particular case the extremals are always straight lines right and we have seen some examples in this case. Let me just recap some of the examples. Uh, well, uh, the, the example that we have seen earlier in our lecture was that of the geodesics the geodesics on planes right and we saw that it naturally boils down to a straight line. Okay, so, then then let us continue our discussion on the second case. So, this case was very straightforward. So, our second case our second case is when uh, we have f is only a function of y and y prime. So, there is no explicit dependence of x on uh, on the integrand f right and we will see we will see that in this case the Euler Lagrange equation again reduces to first order uh, differential equation, but it satisfies a particular identity right and uh, in this case. So, what I just said is the following in this case the Euler Lagrange equation reduces it reduces to the Beltrami identity and let me just show what is that. So, it reduces to the Beltrami identity right uh, and the identity is this particular function of y and y prime. So, the Beltrami identity says that this particular function which is given by y prime partial f partial y prime minus f is a constant right. So, so this is my Beltrami identity notice that the Beltrami identity is only a first order differential equation. So, it is a reduced order Euler Lagrange equation. So, it is much simpler to solve than the original Euler Lagrange equation. Okay. So, let me just state this this result in this case in the form of a theorem. Uh, so, so I am going to continue to number the theorem uh, you know starting from the first lecture onwards we have so far shown one result in the form of one theorem and so this is my second theorem. The first theorem was the Euler Lagrange equation itself. So, the second theorem says that let us say we have a functional. So, let j let j be a functional let j be a functional of the form j of y is equal to integral x 0 to x 1 f of y comma y prime d x right and we define we define our h we define our function h h of uh, well let me call this as uh, as as 2 
because uh, my let me call this relation as 2 uh, because my 1 let me just be very you know methodical by saying that this was my relation 1 in the previous case. Okay. So, my relation 2 is this identity. So, let us define h of y y prime as defined in 2 and we see that we see that the theorem says then h is constant it is a constant along along any extremal extremal y okay and y is a function of x so all we have to show is that the derivative of this function with respect to x which is the independent variable is zero and the the result follows right away that the function will be a constant okay so so the proof as i said is we have to show that the derivative of h is zero so let us see what happens we we figure out we calculate the derivative of h so the derivative of h is by definition h is given by 2 so this is the derivative of the following quantity with respect to x we get that this is equal to del f del y prime minus f Okay, so then the next step is taking uh, the necessary derivatives and using the product rule. We see that this is also equal to y double prime. So taking the derivative of y prime with respect to x times partial f partial y prime plus plus y prime uh, d d x of partial f partial y prime. So that is the first quantity and then we have uh, the no ordinary derivative of f with respect to x that can be changed into a partial derivative uh, of f with respect to the variables y and y prime because those are the only two variables on which f is dependent on. So, then the other terms involve y prime del f del y plus y double prime del f del f del y prime okay so so we will see that this quantity is nothing but but the ordinary derivative of f with respect to x so all we have done is we have used chain rule now notice that this particular quantity can be cancelled so this is in a bracket so we can cancel this quantity with this quantity and club whatever is remaining we see that we see that after clubbing whatever terms are remaining we see that this is also equal to y prime d d x of del y del del f del y prime minus del f del y right notice that this is nothing but the euler lagrange equation so since now well, since since I have since y is an extremal, y is an extremal, it implies that y satisfies satisfies the Euler Lagrange equation, right? That is what is our assumption to begin with, and that implies that this particular expression inside the bracket will be equal to 0, since this is the Euler Lagrange equation the left hand side of the Euler Lagrange equation. Okay, and that completes our proof that h is a constant. Okay, so, so we can see the power in this the power of the result in this case the Euler Lagrange equation has reduced to h which is a first order differential equation as opposed to a second order differential equation governed by Euler Lagrange equation. Okay, so, so let us look at or revisit some of the cases. Uh, some of the examples in this second case. My first example this morning is on the case of catenary. Okay, so, we have looked at the problem of catenary and uh, uh, recall that the functional involved in this case is as follows integral from x 0 to x 1 y times square root of 1 plus y prime square times d x. Okay. So, so, we can see that 
the the integrand in this case is purely a function of y and y prime so we can very uh, this very nicely fits with the second case so we, we can directly apply the beltrami identity and set it equal to a constant so in this case so we have to find we have to find the extremum right so in this case the extremum will be satisfying the beltrami identity and we see that the beltrami identity is given by let me just rewrite the identity again this is given by this is equal to a constant let me call this as c1 so just plugging in the value of so this is my f so plugging in the values here we see that after plugging in we get the following expression y prime so i have just simplified a little bit y prime 1 plus y prime uh, square minus y times 1 plus y prime square okay so then let us then we can take a common uh, denominator to see that this eventually uh, so this is equal to c1 so this eventually reduces to the quantity y divided by 1 plus y prime square is equal to c1 okay so that is what we have and then the next step will involve solving for y by integrating this equation and we let us let us continue doing that let us integrate this equation and uh, so when we do that we see that well uh, so so the equation here is the following so when we do that we see that let me just first write in this expression let me just uh, separate out y prime and write y prime purely as a function of the other quantities y and c1 so i have separated out y prime from the expression and uh, we can see that if that c1 cannot be zero because c1 cannot be zero right because because if if c1 is zero right let us go back to the previous slide if c1 is 0 the only solution i get is y is equal to 0 right it implies that y identically equal to 0 is the only solution okay y identically 0 is the only solution and that is what we have here so c1 is not 0 and then we can continue we can we can integrate this to get the following that my x is integral so dy by square root of y square by c1 square minus 1 here y prime is dy dx so i can integrate x with respect to y and we get so this is an indefinite integration we get the following expression c1 times log of y plus square root of y square minus c1 square divided by c1 plus c2 which is the second integration so then the next step will involve you know changing this particular expression we have already now found the extremal but the extremal is not in a form that i can show what is the shape of the curve in catenary so let me write rewrite this let me rewrite this solution in a more convenient form so first let us now write rather than using the log form let us write it in the exponential form so i see that this is we see that in the exponential form i get c1 times x minus c2 divided by c1 of exponential right so let me call this as exponential notice that i can take c2 on the other side divide by c1 and that is a factor that i am getting and this is also equal to y plus square root y square minus c1 square so let me call this expression as as uh, uh, well i call this expression as a i call this expression as b and then then notice that uh, i can always uh, generate another expression from here let me just you know take the inverse on both sides uh, so so what i am saying is the following uh, we can rewrite expression b 
again as follows that this is also equal to minus of x minus c 2 divided by c 1. This is also equal to 1 over this particular quantity right or no sorry. So, c 1 we have just multiplied by c 1 throughout. So, this is c 1 square divided by the quantity on the right hand side of b right and this is uh, we leave it as it is we call this another expression let us say c right. So, we see that so, why we have written another expression for b is because now the next step will involve adding these two quantities on the left hand side and the quantities on the right hand side. So, we see that the quantities on the left hand side will become. So, this is e to the power x minus c 2 by c 1 plus e to the power minus x minus c 2 by c 1 right and this is y plus square root y square minus c 1 square plus c 1 square divided by square root divided by y plus y square minus c 1 square right. And then we can simplify this further this is also equal to after simplification by taking the common denominator this gives us this is equal to 2 y right and and the quantity on the on the left hand side is nothing but 2 c 1 times cos hyperbolic of x minus c 2 by c 1 right. So, finally, we get the expression as follows we get the solution as follows we see that my extremal satisfies this particular equation y. So, y of x is c 1 cos hyperbolic uh, x minus c 2 divided by c 1. So, this is a much more convenient form of expressing the extremal in this particular case. Now, if we if we recall in the in this catenary problem we are trying to minimize the potential energy of the cable. So, it turns out that if the potential and if the cable has this shape of a cos hyperbolic function then the potential energy which was represented by the functional the potential energy of the cable is minimum right. Well, I am just saying minimum we have not figured out whether it is minimum or maximum, but at least the potential energy has reached its extremum right. Uh, later on when we talk about sufficient condition we will show that this extremum is indeed the minimum. So, right now let us just assume uh, that the extremum that we have found is the minimum ok. So, so, so that completes the discussion of this example. Let me look at another case uh, case study or example that I have described in my first lecture that is the example of brachistochrone ok. So, let me just revisit that problem. Okay. So, the problem involved a functional. So, I am not going to write the entire detail of this problem, but just the functional. The functional in this case involved an integral of the following form. It involved square root of 1 plus y prime square divided by square root divided by y dx. Notice that the quantity on the numerator is nothing but the arc length and the quantity in the well we had a square root y and the quantity in the denominator represented a form of velocity right. So, this is the total length divided by the total velocity. So, we are extremizing the time functional in this case. Again notice that in this case also the integrand in this integral is purely a function of y and y prime. So, we can very uh, very safely use our Beltrami identity and in this case my Beltrami identity will reduce the Euler Lagrange as follows. So, what we see is that y prime del f del y prime minus f is we just plug in this integrand. So, this is my small f and this reduces to the following form y well. Uh, so, y prime square divided by square root of y plus y times 1 plus y prime square minus square root of 1 plus y prime square divided by y and after simplification of this expression 
we see that this is also equal to negative 1 over y times 1 plus y prime square. And this is set equal to a constant uh, by the Beltrami identity okay, to get the extremal. So, it's from here we can solve for y as a function of x. The first step is to just invert this expression and take the square. right? So, so just for you know bookkeeping purpose, let me call this as c0, a constant c0, and now we invert this expression and take the square on both sides. We see that we see that now the new expression becomes y times 1 plus y prime square. This is equal to another constant c1, right? I don't care, you know, I don't want to uh, you know uh, simplify in terms of c0. Let me call this as another constant c1. So from here we see that uh, the direct solution is not possible. The direct, so, so this is our uh, extremal, the extremal curve satisfies this ODE, but the direct solution will not be possible. So, we use an alternative approach. We solve this equation parametrically. So, solve parametrically. So, what I mean by solving parametrically is as follows. I am going to introduce a new parameter on which both y and x will depend. So, I am going to explicitly find y as a function of that parameter and x as a function of that parameter and that will describe the extremal. Okay. So, let me just introduce the fact that let us say y prime is tan of psi. So, as if y is y, y prime is the slope of a curve. So, it is tan of psi. So, psi is our new parameter. Okay. So, immediately we can see that 1 plus y prime square is 1 plus tan psi square which is secant square psi. Okay. So, so, let me call this boxed expression as 1 and let me call this second expression as 2. So, I can directly plug in this quantity here in the boxed expression and we get that we get that. Uh, so, from, from 1 and 2 I get that y, y is equal to c 1 divided by secant square psi or this is also equal to c 1 cos square psi. So, I have already found the parametric representation of y with respect to the parameter psi. So, let me let me also call this expression as a and now my next task is to find the expression for the x component in the form as a function of the same parameter psi. So, to do that let us notice let us notice the fact that, uh, so let me rewrite. So, y is c 1 cos square psi that is what we have found and let me further you know simplify this using the double angle formula that this is also equal to 2 times 1 plus cos 2 psi. Okay? So, now to figure out the, the expression for x as a function of psi, let us first differentiate this expression with respect to psi again. So, we see that dy d psi dy d psi is equal to negative 8 c 1 cos psi sin psi d psi. Right? So, dy d psi is this or let me just say the following. Let me just say that I am going to I am going to uh, take this element d psi I am going to take this element d psi on the right hand side and I can express d y the element d y in the form of this quantity times d psi. Okay. So, then, then I also had that recall, recall that y prime was tan psi that is what we began with or from here I can see that d x d y is 1 over tan psi or this is also equal to cotangent of psi or what I see is that d x is equal to cot psi times d y and the next step will involve just explicitly you know substituting this element d y with this expression above and we see and then integrating with respect to with respect to uh, psi. To, to finally, get that let me just rewrite now after substituting this expression. First, we get that d x is negative 4 c 1 times 1 plus cos 2 psi d psi. 
okay and then the next step will involve integrating this expression with respect to psi and we see that x of psi is uh, another constant c2 which is a constant of integration minus 2 c1 times 2 psi plus sin 2 psi right and let me call this as b so so just a moment we we have now named this expression as a because this is the relation of y with respect to psi and now we have ex renamed another relation b which is x as a function of psi so now we have completely described our extremal motion x and y in the form of the parameter psi now uh, students should recall that we had already revealed the solution to this problem the brachistochron problem and we had a similar i had written a similar solution except that instead of 2 psi we had you know uh, psi so you can just replace 2 psi by psi everywhere and if people recall if we were to plot x versus y if we were to plot x versus y the plots will follow a locus which is which is a point on the rim of a bicycle wheel right so these are nothing but these this locus of points are nothing but following uh, following the curve which is known as the cycloid or a point which lies on the rim of a bicycle wheel okay so so that completes the discussion on this example let me uh, well let me just uh, move on